I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update from Monday, February the 23rd, 2015. A Hamas terror cell in Hebron was broken up by Israeli security forces last month. The joint operation by Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, and the IDF was announced only today. The 11-man terror cell had been planning to carry out suicide bombings and other terror attacks inside Israel. The key figures in the cell were named as 20-year-old Sahib Mamun Saltan and his 28-year-old cousin Salam Abbas Saltan. Weapons and explosive devices were also confiscated. Jerusalem Mayor Nir Barkat is being hailed as a hero. He and his security detail came to the aid of a stabbing victim in Jerusalem yesterday afternoon. 27-year-old ultra-Orthodox Jewish Abraham Goldschmidt was walking in Jerusalem in Kikart Sahal, or IDF Square, when 18-year-old Palestinian Muhammad Saeed Abu Etzba began stabbing him. The mayor had been waiting in a car at the intersection with his office chief and personal security guard when the attack occurred. They pulled over and ran towards the scene, the guard pulling out his gun and ordering the terrorist to drop his knife, which he did. They then subdued the attacker and offered aid to Goldschmidt, who was lightly to moderately wounded in the attack. Last night, Goldschmidt had a chance to express his deep gratitude to the mayor when Barkat visited him in the hospital. Charges were brought today against a former Nazi sergeant. German prosecutors charged the unnamed 94-year-old man with 3,681 counts of accessory to murder on allegations that he served in the Nazi Auschwitz death camp as a medic, allegedly helping the death camp function. Back in 2013, federal investigators in Germany recommended bringing charges against 30 former Auschwitz suspects under a new precedent in German law. The SS sergeant is the most recent one to be charged. Former head of the Reform Movement's Religious Action Center, Rabbi David Saperstein, was sworn in on Friday as the new U.S. envoy for religious freedoms. Saperstein said there was just one main reason he was there, and that was to raise his voice in the face of violence and persecution. Saperstein noted in his remarks the rise of anti-Muslim acts and anti-Semitic acts of violence that he said we thought we'd never see again after World War II. Part of his work now, he said, would be to support civil society, including religious communities, in, quote, shaping policies that contribute to isolating and delegitimizing extremist religious voices. Israel said yesterday that it will purchase 14 F-35 stealth fighters from U.S. aerospace company Lockheed Martin. The purchase will be funded through the U.S. military aid to Israel. The first batch of aircraft are expected to arrive in the country by the end of 2016. U.S. Ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro has invited Israeli companies to join him in the Select USA Summit of 2015. Shapiro is looking for up to 20 Israeli companies to join him, saying the event was a great chance to find and grow the mar their market. The summit is aimed at opening the U.S. market to foreign investment. It will take place outside Washington, D.C. from March the 23rd through the 24th. Israeli author Ayelet Sabari has won the 2015 Sammy Rohr Prize for Jewish Literature for her book, The Best Place on Earth Stories, which explores the history of Israel and the connections between cultures and generations of Jews of Middle Eastern and North African descent. The prize winner was announced by the Jewish Book Council today. The $100,000 prize was created by the late businessman and philanthropist Sammy Rohr to recognize emerging writers who articulate the Jewish experience and the author's potential to make significant ongoing contributions to Jewish literature. A public program will honor Sabari as well as four finalists at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in New York City this spring. And the 87th Academy Awards were held last night in Los Angeles. Jewish winners included Mexican Jewish cinematographer Emmanuel Lubezki for Birdman and screenwriter Graham Moore for Best Adapted Screenplay for his script for The Imitation Game. Israeli live-action short Aya lost in its category to British short film The Phone Call. And turning now to our JBS programming for tonight, coming up after the news on In the News, speaking from Jerusalem Conference of Presidents Executive Vice Chairman Malcolm Honline 
discusses the controversy surrounding Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's upcoming address to a joint session of Congress. Then at 7.30, Holocaust survivor and historian Randolph Brahm is presented the 2014 Mensch Award at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in New York. At 8 o'clock, director of the documentary Deli Man, Eric Greenberg Anjou, and documentary subject David Ziggy Gruber sit down with Judy Gelman Myers on new Jewish cinema. At 9, Mosab Hassan Youssef and Gonen Ben Yitzchak Join Mark Gala to talk about their incredible story documented in the award-winning film The Green Prince. And then at 10 tonight, former chief rabbi of Great Britain, Lord Jonathan Sachs, sits with NPR's Ira Flatow for a program on science, religion, and the search for meaning. That's from the 92nd Street Y. That's all coming up tonight on JBS and JBSTV.org. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, February the 23rd, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.